Good morning, uh, welcome to today's live session. I'm here at Art Call. My name's Pam Sidhu. I'm going to be uh, talking you through the power of nature. That's what we're covering today in the Stay Connected project. So, how are we all doing this morning? So, um, of course, every Monday morning um, we have been going live, and uh, we are doing that um, here at Art Call as a part of the Dobshire Foundation and a Stay Connected project, keeping you connected. Uh, keeping ourselves connected as well with um, with the people, with our users here at ArtCore. Now, I was um, previously um, doing mindfulness sessions at ArtCore. In per, in, you know, we were running our classes, we were running our groups, we were running our workshops. Unfortunately, lockdown happened. Um, we experienced this pandemic. So we have thought, right, you know what? We are bringing this online to you. Um, things are slowly but surely starting to open up, but we're bringing it online anyway. Now I'm just sharing this uh, video so that uh, more people can access it. Um, but uh, how have you been doing? Please do um, you know, leave some comments. Let me know, have you been using any of the techniques that we've been covering here? Have you been um, you know, perhaps um, pondering over some of the advice given? Have you perhaps tried any of it? Have you been spending more time in the moment? Have you been having more mindful moments perhaps? Let me know how you're getting on. And uh, that's the great thing about this being a Facebook Live is it can be interactive as well. So I would love to hear from yourself and love to hear how you are um, finding these sessions. So let's, so this week we are covering, this week we are covering the power of nature. So every week we've had different themes, we've had different things that we're looking at. This week it's all about the power of nature. Now what a great time to be experiencing that power of nature. Yes, it is the middle of July currently. We are in the middle of summer. Um, a great time to be experiencing the outdoors. Now the rain has finally stopped. We have had quite a lot of rain. Um, but uh, now, this, you know, it seems to be a lot brighter weather and they do say that we are heading for a heat wave. So is it time to get ourselves out in the garden and to start doing a little bit of gardening? Now, when I've been speaking to people and also when I've been going out for my daily walks and I've been looking at people's gardens, people seem to be a lot more keen on the gardening, especially through lockdown. Now, I know myself, I thought to myself, you know what, I'm going to plant some stuff this year. I never really planted it before, thought it'd be a great activity, something to do with the kids. thought, let me get myself, um, you know, doing a little bit of gardening. But when it came to it, I couldn't even get some certain seeds because I think a lot of people had that same idea. Of course, in lockdown, the garden centres were shut. So what did we do? Um, you know, I ordered a couple of things online. Um, some of them still haven't arrived. You know, I thought I might grow, grow some carrots and things like that. Um, but um, that didn't happen. But I did actually, for the first time, plant something. Never done any gardening before. Um, are you one of these people where you've done gardening perhaps for the first time? Are you a pro when it comes to the garden? Um, you know, how much time have you actually been spending outdoors if you're blessed enough to have a garden? Now, of course, when we're talking about planting and growing things, you don't necessarily have to have a garden. So, you know, um, you know, the, even things like um, um, having a pot plant, having hanging baskets, having, um, you know, vegetable trays that are growing, you know, a, herb, a little herb garden growing on your kitchen windowsill, perhaps. There's lots of different ways that we can be doing gardening. But I'll tell you a little bit about my experience of gardening through lockdown. So um, I decided to grow something called cucumber melons. And apparently um, they're like, they're the, one of the only seeds that I can actually get hold of, but they are apparently little, they look like little miniature melons, but when you eat them, they taste like cucumbers, hence the name cucumber melons. So I thought it was a great thing to be doing with the kids. I thought, let me order some of those. And I also got myself um, some sunflowers as well for the kids. Now, I'd never planted anything before. Now, for some of you, that might seem a little bit bizarre, but it's it's real. I had never actually planted anything before. And I thought to myself, I thought, can it really be as easy as putting that seed in the soil, watering it and letting it grow? So uh, I took to the advice of some of my family members, which are keen gardeners, and I was told that, you know, there's a pointy side, there's a round side, you've got to get it the right way around and blah, blah, blah. So anyway, did it. Myself and my two young children, we planted some of these seeds. And lo and behold, about a week to 10 days later, shoots started to grow. It really was that easy. And you know, I, I don't even think I got the um, pointy side and the round bit right, the right way up when it came to these seeds, but they grew. So my point being, it's actually really easy to, um, you know, start growing stuff. If you've never grown anything previously, it's not too late, you know, plant that garden. 
Um, and, um, you know, lots of people, as I've seen on my walks out, have been spending more time, maybe pruning the bushes, maybe making, um, you know, getting quite artistic as well. You know, I've seen a few um, Edward Scissorhand type um, creations where people have been, you know, you know, really being in the moment and concentrating and focusing on being in nature, being outside and um, you know getting that creativity going with them um, what they're doing in terms of the the, the, the bushes um, in terms of um, pruning in terms of creating some great artistic development so art of course is not always confined to a pen and paper or a pencil and paper or paints um, of course our gardens can become our artwork as well so i'm just looking at some of the comments that have come in here a very good morning to you all Let's have a look. Um, Vic is saying that uh, they found that it's been easier to be more creative in the garden. That's great. An upcycle rather than shopping. Started work on a fountain out of tyres and bits and bobs. Such a sense of relaxation and peace, creating things. That's wonderful, Vic. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, it is absolutely wonderful. And it is, there's something so relaxing about being out there in the garden. Um, about, about it, it is the power of nature isn't it and that sounds absolutely wonderful that you've created this fountain out of tires how creative is that and artistic as well so we want to be seeing your pictures coming in as well um, as well you know please do use do use the hashtag um, power of nature hashtag stay connected here at Artcore we want to see these um, creations that you are doing now of course um, the garden bringing it back to the garden now you've me saying previously that the mind can be like a garden so what is it that I mean by that if you, for those of you that are going here what is this so I'll imagine that the mind is a garden so just like you'll create a beautiful garden outside in your garden or you know maybe on, a, on your windowsill or your potting plants or what, however you may be doing it your hanging baskets imagine you're creating this garden in here so how do we do that so let's use the analogy of flowers beautiful flowers being positive thoughts and the weeds being negative thoughts. Now, have you ever noticed out in nature, out in a real garden, those weeds are gonna grow faster. They do, don't ask me why, they grow faster. I noticed it a couple of years ago, I saw this patch of weeds growing and it was growing faster than the grass, it was growing faster than the flowers in the garden and I thought, hey, you know what, we need to stay on top of that. And then I had that light bulb moment where I thought, just the way we need to stay on top of our negative thoughts, because um, if we're not careful, those weeds, can grow too big in the garden of our mind and even push out the positive stuff that's in there. So uh, let's take that special time, um, maybe even when we're out in the power of nature, you know, practicing our gardening to think, hang on, am I thinking positive thoughts right now? Am I thinking about something that's in the moment? Or have I gone back into a weed? Have I gone back into a negative experience? Because often we can have ne negative experiences. Things can happen in our life. You know, but every time we play that in our mind, we're bringing it back to the surface. It's like we're watering that weed and we can choose. We can choose whether we're going to pull those weeds out and whether we're going to water those flowers or whether we're going to keep watering that weed. So uh, just another twist there on um, your gardening. Next time you're gardening, have a think about what are we actually doing with our inner garden as well. Now, another great tip um, from us here at Art Court in terms of spending time in the power of nature is unplug for the weekend. So by that, I mean uh, unplug away from technology. Now, you might think, whoa, how am I going to do that? How am I going to stay away from technology? But, you know, it's just a weekend. You know, there was a time the way we were living as a society, of course, where we weren't on technology, but we've just had this boom. Now, technology has its blessings. If it wasn't for technology, you wouldn't be able to see me now. I wouldn't be able to speak to you directly like I am right now in this moment or maybe afterwards when you're watching this Facebook Live back. But it's just taking that time to just unwind and unplug from our phones, from our tablets, from our laptops, and yes, even the telly. Take that weekend to just give yourself that little bit of mental space because of course we're taking information in all the time. You know, when we check in on our phones, we're going onto social media, we might be going onto the news, we're going onto all these different things. And all the time, the mind is taking on this information. Uh, we may even be taking the information on um, in, okay, I'm just getting reports coming in here of people saying that the, the volume is low. If you can hear me okay and you're watching this, can you let me know please, just so that I know that there's um, no problem going on with the technology. And I'll just, uh, 
uh, get it checked out on our side here as well. But if you can hear me okay, please do let me know. Um, but um, I'll continue with that. So I was talking about spending the weekend unplugged and uh, you know staying off um, all kinds of technology just to give the mind that little bit of time to unwind. Now I always say it's like we're we're like an onion, right? So you might think, hey, but. Just as an onion has different layers, we have different layers of thoughts. Um, that's great, Vic. Thank you for that. So um, um, some of you are saying that it sounds fine. So if maybe, you know, the, uh, if there's a problem with the volume, just check all your settings. It seems to be going out okay from here. So going back to the analogy of this onion, we have different layers of thoughts like an onion. Um, and, um, you know, what we can do by unplugging from technology for the weekend is just to, you know, start to bring down those layers. So we might have a layer, for example, of thoughts, which is associated to the telly. So it might be, you know, our favourite characters of our favourite soap or cereal, a movie, you know, even that Friends episode, you know, even, you know, like the happy, good stuff that we might be seeing, it's still going into our mind. And, you know, you'll know that it's gone into the deeper part of your mind if you find yourself thinking about it after you've stopped watching telly. You know, we, we could be watching um, the news or we could be watching, um, you know, a, a gripping film where we're on the edge of our edge of our seat. It's all information that's going into the mind. Um, social media, you know, let's just go online and let's see how so-and-so is doing. Even if you think, you know what, let me see how Pam's doing um, on social media. Just for one weekend, you know what, I'll still be there on social media afterwards. And so will all your favourite people, your friends and family, you know, all being well. Everybody's still going to be there. But just give yourself that little bit of time to unplug from technology. Um, we're, you know, we're being hit with more information than we ever have in human history before now. So now in 2020, with the amount of information that we're taking in all the time, it's more than ever before. So just give it a go, you know, maybe write yourself a list of all the things that you love to do that's not technology related and go for it. One weekend, you know, just take a weekend out and just think to yourself, right, this weekend, I'm having that warm bath. I'm going out for that walk. I'm, you know, meeting up with people where, you know, where it is feasible to do so, of course, depending on government guidelines, you know, keeping that social distancing in place, staying safe and staying alert, you know, um, maybe it's, it's about doing that gardening all weekend, maybe it's, you know, doing those home improvements, maybe it's time to start some cooking, whatever it might be, you know, make a list, maybe, you know, if you're going to be writing that book, that you always said you were going to get round to or reading that book even you know as long as it's not on your kindle as long as it's not technology related why not you know but um come out of um the way we can be with technology just for one weekend maybe have a designated family member to let you know if there's anything major that happens on the news they can give you that call um but then for the rest of the time just think to yourself no you know what i'm unplugging I'm unplugging this weekend. So um, if there's any of you that do do that, please do let me know. I would love to hear your feedback. I would love to hear how you got on with unplugging from technology. It's something that I do every so often and I just find it to be really, really beneficial. By the end of the weekend, my mind is so much more relaxed. So, um, you know, do let me know how that goes. And uh, also, uh, you know, another, moving on to another point of ours here on the, the Mindful Moments um, session that we're doing today is to hit the trails yes get yourself out you know um we've been in lockdown um coming out of lockdown slowly even when we were in lockdown we were allowed that one essential exercise a day i for one did it walking as a family we would go out we would be taking walks is this something that um, uh, you have been doing is it something that you are starting to do now as we as you know the government advice is that we can drive further away that we're actually going out and you know are you, are you going out into nature you know we live in be a beautiful beautiful country and this time of the year i just think england is so beautiful we've got some gorgeous countryside around us even if you didn't want to go so far away you know wherever you might be watching this right now in the uk you don't need to drive that far um to get to some beautiful countryside now i'm right now sat we art hall we are here in derby so in terms of what's going on um, around us, we're in a really great location. So for those of you who tuned in from Derby right now, we're, you know, we're almost the centre point of England. So whichever way we go, we're going to hit beauty. Around us, we've got the Derbyshire Peaks. 
Um, we've got some really nice spots um, all around us. And, you know, being in the centre there, you can kind of choose, okay, you know what, this time I'm going north, this time I'm going south, west, east, wherever it may be, and hit some beautiful countryside. Um, you know, um, forest bathing, you know, that's an actual thing in Japan for um, relaxing the mind, for therapy, for boosting the immune system. They recommend it, um, the Japanese do, and it's a real activity which they call forest bathing. Now, what is forest bathing? It's just walking through the forest, walking through the trees. And they've found that the physical effect and mental effect are immense of just being out there in nature, in those trees, in that forest, um, and really immersing ourselves um, uh, it, with the power of nature. Now, if we at the same time can use our five senses and think to ourselves, what am I seeing? What am I hearing? What can I feel? What can I taste? What can I smell? We're immersing ourselves in that nature even more. It becomes even stronger. So if any of you would uh, you know, um, like to recommend any great walks, please do leave your comments here, even if it's afterwards and you're watching this video back a little bit later. Um, we would love to hear from you and I'm sure other people as well would love to um, hear um, you know, and receive your tips of the good places to go walking. But when you're walking, you know, uh, I'm always aware of my feet. I'm always aware of my feet on the ground. And the great thing about walking, for example, through a forest is the ground feels very different. So I've still got my shoes on. I know some people would like to go barefoot as well. But for myself in the forest, I've still got my shoes on. But the forest floor just feels so much softer. Um, if I'm on the lawn, um, if I'm on the grass, you know, if I'm out in a park or something, I'm qu I'll quite normally take my shoes off and just feel that feeling of the grass under my feet. It just, it's amazing. Um, for those of you who know, uh, who have done that, you, uh, you will know what I'm talking about. But um, so, you know, maybe it's not about walking for you. Maybe it's about dusting off that bicycle polishing out um, those walking boots and getting yourself back out there. Now, I was talking to one of my neighbours. He went for a 40-mile bike ride. 40 miles now. Um, hats off to him. I haven't actually done that myself. Um, but uh, he just said, you know what? He just said, I, I just felt like going for a good bike ride. And he was out there in nature. So there's lots of ways to um, hit the trail. Now, hit the trails. Now, there's a lot of links online as well. You know, there's um, things like the TripAdvisor. You can look up Derbyshire, England, if you're close to Derby or wherever you may be and, and have a look and see where is your local nature hotspot. So even if you're sat in a big city, we're blessed here in this country. We don't have to drive that far um, before we get out into nature. Now, whether you're out in nature, whether you're in the garden, wherever you may be, another great thing to do is to grab your camera, take those pictures, make those memories. So one of the things that we do in mindfulness is a technique called the spotlight. And you can do this through your camera as well. So the spotlight is where we're shining a spotlight on a particular thing that we're looking at. So right now, wherever you might be, take a look around you and imagine that your vision is like a spotlight and focus just on one thing. So it may be that you're focusing on me right now. It may be that you're looking at this Stay Connected project picture that's behind me. Just focus on that right now. Imagine you're shining a spotlight on that and just stare at it and just focus your full attention on it. And as you're doing that, you're in the moment. You can see that it says Stay Connected. Um, you can see the colours there. You can see the different logos there because right now you're shining your spotlight on that. And you can choose to shine your spotlight on different things, um, you know, different things in the garden. Maybe you've been planting these beautiful flowers. Maybe, maybe when you're out walking in the countryside, you're hitting the trails. You know, you could be taking different pictures. And even if you're doing it through that camera lens, imagine that's you focusing your attention, which it is, on that particular thing that you're taking the picture on. So maybe perhaps before you get your camera out, look around you and think, okay, what am I shining my spotlight on? What am I focusing my attention on? And as you do, you come into the moment because you're looking at something associated with being here now. It's all about being now here and not nowhere. So as you're now here, then you can get your camera and you can take that picture. Now, the great thing about cameras is, um, you know, most of us have a smartphone. So most of us are carrying around a camera with us all the time. 
so we can be taking in the beauty of what's around us. Now, there's lots of pros to this. Now, I do hear feedback sometimes from people saying, oh, you know, there's a selfie being taken there, or that person might not be in the moment because, you know, they're taking pictures away rather than experiencing the moment. Well, you know, I think it depends on your mindset. It depends on how you do it. Because if you're thinking to yourself, you know what, I'm looking right now at this beautiful tree and it's gorgeous and I'm taking a photograph of this beautiful tree to capture this moment, you're very much in the moment. Uh, and that's something that I do regularly. But when we're taking a photo with a camera, we're looking directly at what we're looking at and we're taking that picture, we're in the moment. Now let's just imagine for a second that our mind is the camera. Imagine that we are looking through the camera lens of our mind as we're looking out at the world. Now, are we looking directly at the world or are we looking through the different lenses and then seeing the world? So just like on Insta, Snapchat, you know, we've got all these filters, um, you know, on, on, on all our social media, we've got all these filters, we've got all these apps where we could be putting on different lenses, putting on different filters and then taking a photograph. Are we doing that naturally? when we're looking out at the world. And I don't mean things like changing our face and stuff like that, I mean thinking. So say for example, if I was to be looking at a tree, a beautiful tree, am I really just looking at that tree? Or am I looking through a filter of, later on, I've got to sort this out for dinner. Maybe there's another filter there, which is, might be, I'm feeling cold. Maybe there's another filter there, which might be, um, yesterday, this happened. So I need to go and do X, Y, and Z later on. Am I really there looking at the tree? Yes, I'm looking at the tree, but I'm not giving it my full attention because my full attention is going into other repetitive thoughts, other thoughts that I might be running in my mind. So just take that moment before you take that picture with your camera, your real camera now, to make sure that the camera of the mind is fully present when you're taking that photo with your real camera. So we do that reminder once again of just being present in the moment. So just think to yourself, this is what I'm seeing right now. Really look at that picture that you're about to take. Take that picture with your mind's eye first and think, yes, this is what I'm seeing. This is what I can hear right now in this moment in time. These are the sounds that I'm hearing. This is what I can feel physically. I can feel the air physically. I can feel um, the, uh, the clothes on my body. I can feel my feet on the floor. And then tell yourself emotionally that you're feeling good, you're feeling calm, you're feeling present. It's a very strong mind and body connection. So you know, the body will listen to what the mind tells it. And just be aware of the tastes in your mouth. Be aware of what you can smell. That's it. You're in the moment. You're taking that picture now without any filters, without any lenses. And take the picture. Now, we want your pictures. So please do, um, you know, across social media, when you're taking those pictures, use the, you know, tag us here at Artcore, use the hashtag, the power of nature, the hashtag, stay connected, because it is all about staying connected in this moment, and nature is a fantastic way of doing that. So any pictures that you do, do take, please do tag us, and of course, use those hashtags as well. So hashtag power of nature, and hashtag as stay connected. So uh, that's the great thing about taking that direct picture and looking directly out at the world. You know, practice looking directly out at the world. Sometimes, you know, we might not realise that we were doing this, that we were looking through filters and then looking out at the world. But, uh, you know, maybe after you've heard this, you'll think, ah, oh, yeah, okay, you know what, that's what Pam was talking about. So uh, now, you know what, another great tip for being in the power of nature is taking up an outdoor hobby. So there's lots of things that we could be doing outdoors. Now, maybe this is something that you've already taken up. Um, maybe it's something that you've been considering doing. Um, so, you know, it might be cycling. It might be um, something like archery, uh, fishing, camping, um, you know, whatever it might be. You know, it might be something a bit more adventurous, like even beekeeping, um, you know, bird watching. It might not just be about keeping bees, maybe pigeons. I know a neighbour of mine used to keep pigeons. Um, which was quite interesting to watch as well and very relaxing to see them flying, um, you know, absolutely lovely. Gardening, you know, it's another great outdoor hobby. Um, you know, getting a dog, remember a dog is for life though. Um, a dog walking, uh, maybe you're going to be a little bit more adventurous when it comes to your outdoor sports like kayak kayaking, um, you know, kite flying, that's another great one. You know, I've not done that since I was a kid. 
um, be wonderful um, to be um, you know taking up a hobby like that I think I might just uh, be taking that one up myself in terms of kite flying great thing to be doing with the family or by yourself um, as a kid it was quite normal to get a kite to go out there um, and fly that kite um, and that's here in the UK as a child I spent quite a bit of time in India as well and every evening in India it would be normal to go up on the roof um, because of course people there the houses are flat roofs and get this get this kite and fly it and it's like the whole village would have this kite flying competition um, every single evening who was going to be the winner whose kite was going to be left up there uh, and then you know there were some people that were really really skilled so there's, there's a skill that comes to this as well where they were actually able to cut other people's strings with their strings so that they would be the one that is flying that kite um, at the end and, and winning that kite flying competition so um, you know if you're from um, you know a part of the world where you do that then get those kites out start flying it here in the UK as well weather permitting what a great activity what a great thing to be doing there's lots that we can be doing outside and the main thing is is just to be experiencing the moment after all life is a series of moments and if we're not careful we can miss them and at a time like what we are going through a time like what we've been through like the pandemic um, with this virus with the coronavirus it's so important um, for us to value life and a lot of us um, especially the feedback that I've been getting from people are valuing life a lot more I've had time to think through lockdown about their priorities through life about what it is that they want to be doing many people in terms of the feedback that I've had have really enjoyed that time with their families and want to continue doing that well even as society starts back up again and you find yourself back out there you know take that time um, to have those quality moments you may not have as much time as, as you've had in lockdown but the time that you do have have those quality moments with your family really be present you know really be aware maybe it's through doing that outdoor hobby maybe it's through doing that gardening together maybe it's through taking a series of pictures together you know they, these days everybody in the family has a has their own device who can take the best photo of a particular flower you know we see them on um, well I see them on social media I've not managed to take this amazing picture of a flower just yet but you see it on social media where people are getting that certain angle they're getting you know the magic captured of that flower so you know maybe have a little bit of a competition even between your family and of course you can be posting all of this online we do want your pictures so uh, remember to tag us as art court in them and use the hashtag power of nature and hashtag as stay connected so looking forward to um, seeing all your great pictures. Um, so it is all about the power of nature this week. So we have some amazing weather coming up in the next few days. Get out there, enjoy the power of nature. Now, in terms of myself, I am going to be running um, a Zoom mindfulness class on Saturday, next Saturday. Um, I think that is, well, this coming Saturday anyway, is going to be my last uh, Zoom class for the summer period. Anyway, I'll be back with the Zoom classes in um, in autumn. Um, but if you'd like to join that, then have a look at my page, Pam Sidhu, and there will be something here on Art Court as well, showing you um, how you can join that Zoom class. It's an hours class, so if you'd like you know, that little bit of help, or you'd like to be part of a group, which is great as well, uh, a group of people supporting each other in terms of being mindful and practicing mindfulness, then, um, you know, do join that session on the coming Saturday. And I also do a body scan meditation in that time as well. Now, if for some reason you can't join that class on my YouTube channel on Pam Sidhu, um, I do have free meditations on there. That, so there is a body scan meditation there as well. And there is another short meditation, which is where I'm talking you through your five senses to be in the moment. So if you're getting out there and you're hitting the trails and you're experiencing the power of nature, get your headphones on, get your device on, and um, you know you can also be listening to those me talking you through those five senses so that you're experiencing the moment even more. Let me know how you get on in terms of unplugging for the weekend. Um, you know, if you are unplugging this weekend, um, then um, you know not to worry. I'm going to be back on Monday with another mindful moment session here at Artcore. Now, just going through a couple of these comments that we're getting in. Abano, lovely to hear from yourself. Um, Abano says that um, it was, there was always a competition uh, with kite flying in India and Pakistan. 
Um, sounds interesting, Vanna. I know that uh, many different cultures had, had put different meanings to it. She's saying that in India, Pakistan, it was even, um, they'd end up marrying each other. Uh, so was that um, for the winners then, uh, Vanna? But, um, you know, whether you want to get a series about finding the love of your life through kite flying, you never know what can happen. Um, or whether you just think, you know what, I'm just going to see if I can still fly a kite. If you did it as a kid, see if you can still do it now. I'm certainly going to be giving it a go, so I'll let you know how that goes. But any videos, any photos, remember to do tag us. I'll see you next week.